Scorched Earth. The map that has about five super fans and a whole lot of people who want nothing to do with it because of how outdated, seemingly unappealing, and boring it is. But I am here to tell you that you are mostly correct in thinking that. That said, my tribe and I spent two weeks there collecting every single explorer note on the entire map and then killed the Alpha Manticore. So strap on in, grab your tea, your coffee, your dragon drink from Starbucks, whatever you need, and get ready. Because this ain't gonna be no average Scorched Earth video. There will be suffering today, lots and lots of suffering, as my tribe and I transfer our characters from the island server over to Scorched Earth while taking nothing with us but the characters themselves, and thus their levels and XP along the way. So without further ado, welcome back to Journey's Core. Before we get into the video, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of content. Now we carry on. So we got there late, actually. Scorched Earth had already been online for 377 days in game, so we didn't exactly start at the start of the map like we did on the island. This would go on to rarely be the case for quite some time until Genesis 2, but that's besides the point. I quickly found Nacho and we looked around and marveled at this beautiful structure that had been built by Wrath of the Dodo, which is seemingly the tribe belonging to my friend Torch way back from the island. I had mind wiped uh, back on the island just before we got to Scorch Earth, so I went ahead and applied a bunch of levels, distributed them how I usually do, which is about 30 in fortitude, 140 in speed, 300 in weight, 200-ish in stam at most, and then about 360 plus in health, in case you're curious. Tyler then showed up and we got him in the tribe, just like that along with Kelsier. At that point we were just waiting on screen, so we got her in the tribe and continued on. We harvested a whole lot of bushes for that sweet, sweet fiber, found an epic giant skeleton of some creature, Scorched Earth has a lot of these, and continued to where we were eventually going to build. At the time, I, I thought it'd be really cool to build a Nosti. I was wrong, do not build a Nosti! Because of this goal at the time, we gradually made our way over to Nosti as we gathered. We made some cloth armor for ourselves, killed this big oil bug for some oil, and we taught Tyler about the purple flowers. See, Wrath of the Dodo had a well here, which was very nice for the purposes of keeping us alive. According to Nacho's Jerboa, there was about to be a sandstorm, so we hurried to make a tent that we could all huddle together in and avoid the debuff. Storm's over. Let's go. Oh! oh. oh God, it's still like apocalyptic. <laughs> he stole our shelter! <laughs> After the storm was over, Nacho picked up the tent and we headed out into the dunes. Then Nacho pulled a classic gamer move found a saber tooth, which we then obliterated, and we had a pretty average encounter with a Pegomastax. I then almost killed Tyler by bullying him instead of the saber tooth. You'd think at this point I'm deliberately trying to kill Tyler. I then found an Ovis by chance, level 10, which provided a ton of mutton, which is a really helpful thing to find early on. So we eventually made it to the ruins of Nosti to take cover in and regain some health from the scorching heat. We placed a couple things, took shelter there, and grabbed what may have been our first note. We then realized that there was no water out in Nosti, and it was pretty much a terrible place to build. Go figure. So we geared up, crafted the best armor and weapons we could at the time, and headed back out into the desert. At some point, Nacho had tamed some vultures, which definitely aided in our ability to fight off predators. After a long trek, we found a semi-decent spot next to a large rock wall and set up shelter. I put some tents down and this was effectively where we decided to live for the rest of our time on the map. The dry noodles had set up a ton of huts all over the place and so we had two in the fairly near vicinity which we'd eventually need to break for expansion for both an irrigation pipe as well as general base stuff. Got a campfire, kept building, farming, and things were getting kind of dark. Real dark. Throughout the night we built some structures, jumping right into adobe, got some utilities down, just the usual, and I eventually got started on a pipe since our area wasn't the most convenient for water access being up on a cliff. This pipe took forever and lots of blood, sweat, and tears. I built literally thatched towers to accomplish this. It was, it was rough. Eventually I was almost to the water and then it said this. Dude. So it turns out the dry noodles had built this one by one which prevented me from continuing the pipe, which was about 90% complete and just needed a couple extra ones to actually become connected to the water. 
This was somewhat infuriating, just given how insane it was to build the pipe in the first place to make it look realistic. So I did the most reasonable thing and took the boys to completely obliterate it with me using metal tools. Eventually we finally did it and found that there was some stuff inside that we didn't really need, but vowed to return if the tribe was upset. Finally, I could continue the pipeline so we'd have water up at our base. After finishing the pipe, I headed back up and things were looking pretty alright as far as progress was concerned. Everyone was tired at that point, so we put our stuff away and logged off for the night. Day one, complete. Day two began as I stumbled out of this hut and, much like the island, found a whole lot of random new tames that people had acquired as I was offline. We had some Capros, Morelitops, Tabijara, and I noticed that there was a 140-40 dragon being tamed. I got to work by using an Argentavis and mined some metal. Conveniently, we chose a spot that had some nice little tiny metal nodes in the crevices nearby, which made getting that extra little bit of metal early game a lot easier. Oh, then I J-whistled. Ah, nice one, dickhead. Shellborn, who was in even more sexy armor, mind you, had started raising a magical saber tooth, which was somewhat <laughs> scary. Anyway, I wanted to get started on making a proper base, so I crafted some adobe, got us some feeding troughs, expanded a little bit more, and things were starting to look pretty fancy. I went AFK for like an hour, came back, and it was pitch black. Nice. Kept on building out, made us a fabricator, and I made us some sweet little boxes, beds. We blew up this one by one thing nearby, which was owned by Dry Noodles, and once again, had some supply drop loot. I'm sorry, guys, but please do let me know if you want your wind turbine blueprint back. Now, at some point, as I was building the base, someone, Tyler, had found a really high level tech rex nearby, and he wasn't able to trank it at the time, so I headed on over and got to work. Turned out it was a 138 with eh, stats. I headed home, planning to feed it later, and put on these lovely, lovely Federation armor skins on newly crafted desert cloth armor. Got some more metal, and be able to not- Oh my god, there's an alpha wyvern flying over our base. Built some more things and stuff and stuff and things, and that was pretty much it. The base had made some significant progress, and we decided to make a little bed area and hop off for the night. Day two, done. On day three, you just know that I'm finishing the base, especially after getting on once again and seeing even more substantial progress. We had the beginnings of a greenhouse. Shelbourne pretty much had a fully finished base where he was doing his own stuff just right next door. And Screen and I went to the nearest metal heavy mountain and farmed with an RG Anki combo. On our way back home, we found a Raya note, tablet number five, and deposited our metal back at base. Now you see, notes on Scorched Earth, at least for me, are much harder to find than on the island because I had only ever collected all of them like once before when I was planning to do it this time around, compared to my like fifth time doing it back on the island. In any case, once we were home, we got the metal cooking up, farmed a bunch more stone and sand to continue making clay for the base, and I noticed that Shelbourne was already raising wyvern, a poison wyvern to be exact, which he named Dragon D's Nuts. Now here's a quick building montage since I ended up doing a lot of that. I thought it'd be a good idea to go explore in the mountains with our Rex so that I could get an Argentavis of my own since all of the ones we had kept disappearing or dying. So I took them out, killed a bunch of stuff, got some notes, and found a level 100 Argentavis that I figured would do for basic farming needs. The Argentavis tamed and I named it Sir Prime Meat. I have no consistent naming scheme or rationale for how I name things, so deal with it. <laughs> I slowly headed home on the Rexy in the hot weather and made it back to craft a saddle and finally have my own bird to do general bird stuff with. I wanted to try a new farming technique called hold a human being with a chainsaw in your talons and let them chop trees. This didn't really work very well, but honestly your options are pretty limited with actually good wood gatherers on Scorched Earth. While I was doing that, I brutally deleted some raptors which got in my way. I just spit on my microphone and then we tried a thorny dragon instead. It seemed to work a little bit better, arguably with the weight reduction, but it still isn't great compared to something like a mammoth back on the island. Or later a roll rat from Aberration, or better yet, a strider, which is what I later learned is the most broken thing in the game from Genesis 2. I was out getting cactus sap, minding my own business, and then I killed this Anki, which opened the fucking gates to hell. 
Anyway, the base was coming along for real. We had some stairs to the upstairs, made a giant adobe hatch frame, and I finally finished the base after a whole lot of crafting and placing. Then I logged off for the night as I was more or less f***ing exhausted. Day three, finished. So four days later on day seven, I had finally got back after a vacation to the beach, which completely obliterated my skin because I was a dumbass. But anyways, after a whole lot of progress from the rest of the tribe, I got a quick lay of the land. We had some fully grown wyverns, some rexes raising up, and uh, Beans had left a fertilized rex egg for me to raise one as well, which was handy. It was a bit jarring as usual to come back and see a bunch of progress, but that is an inevitability of having a tribe and something you can't really prevent unless your tribe mates are, for whatever reason, only playing when you're on, which just isn't practical nor fair to anyone. Beans had some very stylish new armor, and shortly after some consideration, I had decided to start streaming Journey's Core from time to time on the channel as I was recording, and so part of the footage from this day was also streamed, which can be found in a playlist on the channel here, or in the description. So following from this and during the stream, I went ahead and took Tyler and Screen out to start getting notes so that we could all three knock them out at the same time as opposed to taking each individually since both of them wanted to have the eventual very, very difficult to get plus 10 levels for getting every single explorer note on every map. Tyler was grappled to the back of a wyvern like a madman and we flew out to the desert to collect some notes. We pretty much had started our note run in the dunes and planned to surround the map first and then cover the central part last. After getting a few and completely obliterating the scorpion, we found this! What the fuck is it doing? Oh god! Death room. Run, 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 run. It nearly killed my lovely, very unsafe passengers, but Nacho came and assisted and helped us kill it. Thanks, Nacho. We were getting a few more notes, but then Nacho told me that my Rex had hatched from when I dropped the egg onto the ground, and so I flew back as fast as I could, and right as I got there, this happened. He's running off. He's running off the cliff. Oh my god. You got him. You. <laughs> You suicidal maniac. This baby's trying to do a speed run. Any percent. Don't worry. <laughs> I went back to where I had left Tyler and Screen, which was out in the dunes, mind you, and found out that they had tamed a dung beetle named El Golden Poop. Okay. We would then proceed to take this dung beetle with us everywhere we went along our adventure. More notes were retrieved, and we eventually headed home and logged off for the night. Oh. I'm back. Oh, hey. Goodbye. Oh no, it opens upwards! <laughs> I'm so sad now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Day 7 was over. See you next stream. I got on two days later because my sunburn had, at the time, become incomprehensibly unbearable. This is just one of the recordings from what would have been day 8. Today was the most painful day of my life. So, the next day I was in slightly less unbearable itchiness and logged on to find a fridge filled with eggs that the tribe had collected. I grabbed a 140 fire wyvern from that fridge and started raising it. Went ahead and popped out my baby rex, aptly named baby rex, and started raising it while I was at least online. We went out farming a bit, I had a minute to fully take in just how much the base had expanded along with all the new tames. My egg finally hatched, and I named it after my favorite fire wyvern from the last cluster I played on Vanilla Evolved, Earth Balance. Except this one was Alpha Earth Balance. I eventually found a new pipe, one that Kelsier had built, and I heavily criticized how it was built, the whole, uh, this. I am so sorry for roasting your pipe, Kelsier. The screen and I asked, and went ahead and fixed it. Also, it is incredibly hard to remove pipes that are floating really high in the air, so do keep this in mind if you're ever considering doing that. Anyway, right as we finished demoing the pipe, like literally the last pipe, I went to go pick up screen and got f***ing yoinked by a cap rope. I went ahead and made some more pipe stuff, crafted a bunch of refined resources, and started making vaults, which was really going to help us with storage. I placed the bookshelves on the opposite side, replaced some vessels, and got those vaults down nice and evenly, uh, sort of. I did some organizing and then I realized I needed some wyvern milk for my baby, so I took this poison wyvern mayhem over to the trench, got a female wyvern stuck, and knocked it out. On my way back, I found out that Kelsier's lightning wyvern was killed in battle fighting an alpha fire wyvern, which he had just barely killed right before his own wyvern died from fire damage. He basically had traded his wyvern for the kill of the alpha, 
And while that sacrifice sucked, we at least got some milk as a result, which I came over to help him grab after he was stranded. And so thus, we then had a ton of milk that I could raise my baby Alpha Earth Balance with, or any other babies we were raising at the time. Lastly, I went ahead and flew to a drop, crafted a few cryopods that I knew we'd need, and I cryoed my stuff, ready to pass out for the night. And that was it for day nine. I started day 10 in a lightning storm in real life. So I shut down my PC and logged out a little bit later. Great. After I was back, I decided to take Screen and Tyler down into the ruins of Nosti, which is the cave buried beneath the fallen city of Nosti. Yes, that one from Raya and John Dakea's stories. We headed on over there to grab the associated notes in and around the cave. We came pretty unprepared and Tyler Leroy Jenkins a damn mantis swarm. You want to explain these two arrows sticking out of my back? How's your health, uh, Tyler? Yeah, you. <laughs> there were many more creatures involved, ultimately, and I met my end via a lovely mantis and its 140 bat friend. So I headed back in, and we all went ahead and grabbed the HLNA note shortly after coming real close to dying from a mantis. <laughs> we then left the cave and proceeded to collect some more HLNA notes across the map after setting some waypoints for specifically where we could find them. Each map leading up to Genesis 1 and 2 has these Chronicles notes, and there are only a couple on each of the prior maps, something like 5 to 10, so it doesn't really take too long to grab them. One that we needed was also in the old Tunnels cave, so we went in, killed a ton of stuff, just barely survived and grabbed the artifact while we were at it. We also found a 130 Megalania that we knocked out and tamed on the way out of the cave. I named him Chef Sticky Fingers upon the request of someone in chat. We got back to base and at this point I started to create training dummies to represent and in a way credit the people who donated via super chats on the stream at the time. So these little training dummies just sort of started to crop up and populate our house. We got a bunch more notes and by a bunch I mean like six hours worth of note collecting. I was beginning to lose all feeling in my hands. Oh, oh and we also went back into the ruins of Nasty again to successfully grab the artifact which we'd need for Manticore later. Headed out, collected notes for a few more hours, and fought a death worm. Turns out Megatherium are excellent for that because if you can get the bug buff from the usually hordes of bugs out in the dunes, you can absolutely destroy some death worms in no time. We put some more training dummies down once we got to the base and resumed the search, only after checking on the Rex, which at this point was getting pretty big. The screen and I went into the Grave of the Tyrants to finish off the artifact collection. Oh, hello, wall coming alive. <laughs> At that point, I was pretty exhausted from what was basically a nine hour long stream and recording session. So I said my goodbyes to the stream and logged off for the night, ready for what the next day had in store. Turns out I wouldn't be on the next day or the next or the next. So I took like a week off and came back online, rejuvenated after experiencing college in person for the first time. Day 18 started as I examined the immense amount of work that had been done around the base. We had an insane number of Rexes, and I was ready to do whatever was necessary to get off the map and beat the Manticore, which is what we planned on doing later that day. While Screen and I had collected every single note, Tyler was still missing a few, and so thus my plan to get them both covered at the same time didn't really work, and I yoinked him and we got notes for the next, like, three hours or something. Cue the note grabbing montage. Oh god, watch out. Oh god, it's a mega! Stop the other. Alas, we finally collected the last one that Tyler needed. Oh, that's it. So with that, we all grabbed our kits, everything we'd need for the fight. <laughs> all the dinos and all that, and the whole tribe, including Nacho, Kelsier, Beans, Scream, Tyler, Shelbourne, and myself, was ready. After a not very long 15 days, technically 18, half of which I probably wasn't online for, let's pretend that didn't happen, we were ready to defeat the Alpha Manticore. And so we activated the pedestal and opened the portal to the arena. Yeah. 
Alright, we're going. <laughs> Three, two, one. I died. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm on so. F6, apparently. Alright, uh, Ryder Rex. I'm on BM1. That's why you mount quickly, because that's right. the port from the We go in the middle. Alright. Oh, go, there it is. Bro. So ugly. They can get them out afterwards, bro. Well. Yeah, we have a full minute to run up there. Just don't get stuck inside the room. Oh, uh. You are. It landed. It's a buff, man. Bro, screw this. Screw this, man. It's working so long. Get him! Sick him, boys! So how his minions work is they spawn as the fight progresses, you know, the more damage he takes, uh, he'll spawn more minions. Over the course, he'll spawn five deathworms and five golems. This is, this is the yeah. alpha boss. Deathworms right? are easy. There we go. Uh, yeah. Nacho's in the ground for me, like underneath Banshee. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's yeah, it's tactical. She can't hit me with those if I'm inside the ground. <laughs> it's all like you just Wait, you, up and you guys like, didn't bring a shovel? <laughs> uh, come on, man. Money. I was thinking oh, like you showed it. Oh, it oh, oh, no, up again. It landed, landed. It oh, landed in the ground. I'm gonna try to keep the golems away then. Keep an eye on your health, guys. Alright, it's pretty much done, so. Yeah. We got to put some in Unless it goes just to the ground again, like, you know, over here. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I mean, hey, at least we all know we did it. But fucking. Which is good. Like, no. Oh, oh, that would have been cool. Ow. Can I have some, yeah, no uh. A okay. little bit of a sisty on it. What is it doing? You okay, though? Careful. It's vibing. Oh, he's just floating uh -huh. there for a minute. I thought he was gonna glitch out. There we go. Uh, Tyler, don't fight those pikes up. Alright, uh, landed. Trying to oh, okay. Oh, it's perforated. Oh, this is nearly dead. I am stuck in this place. Ow. Uh, Tyler, do you okay? Yeah, it's, it's like still like 9 tenths. Alright, man score, just try and focus the Alright, GG. And got So, we had grabbed the 4x note in the boss arena, luckily, and then we killed the manticore. It's pretty easy. The Manticore is like one of the easiest bosses in the game. Because of that, it was pretty anticlimactic, especially combined with the fact that there is no Ascension cutscene. But that doesn't mean we can't make our own, right? Here, just watch this and really use your imagination. So I leave you all with this. Scorched Earth is an underwhelming map that is otherwise hot, sandy, and most of all, unfinished. I am one to pepper Ark with compliments. I nerd out over its lore, as you know. I obsess over the soundtrack. But when it comes to blatantly unfinished content, I seriously cannot help but be brutally honest. However, that said, while Scorched Earth functionally isn't that great, it is undeniably a beautiful map. I have a lot of fond memories of Scorched Earth, and I'm glad to have tagged along some friends to come on one last desert adventure with me so that we could experience the truly invigorating death and suffering and set fire to the skies of Scorched Earth. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It is undoubtedly going to be shorter than the island one. Granted, I don't know by how much. I guess editing Ned from the future will know the answer to that one. But if you found yourself liking this video, go ahead and smash, punch, demolish, obliterate the like button and subscribe for more of this kind of stuff. Whatever this is, this stuff, just subscribe for more. As always, stay tuned for the next in the Journeys Core series as we take on what was arguably the longest map we fought through the broken and twisted underground arc of aberration. Anyways, that's it for me. I will see you all in the next video, and good luck, survivors.